So you've been hearing about the Lakers pattern, and I'd like to put this talk into perspective. As you know, the foundation of the lake house is Delta Lake, which makes all of your data, no matter what type, available at scale and high quality. Now, in order to support data teams, Databricks provides several capabilities that all operate on the same consistent data. You heard about the SQL service in Ali's keynote, which provides high performance SQL analytics for BI and reporting. To complete the picture, we provide a collaborative environment for data science and machine learning. You heard Mate talk about some of the latest machine learning features earlier today. I am going to focus on the next generation of our data science workspace, which is the environment data teams use to access our data science and machine learning capabilities. Now, why is this environment so important? It's because of you. It's because of data scientists, ML engineers, data analysts, data engineers, and all of the roles that make up what we call data teams. And data teams are on the rise. And I'd say we're just at the beginning of this trend. In fact, three out of the top eight jobs in LinkedIn's latest emerging jobs report are data and AI roles. And we all know that there's a shortage of talent in the space. So making data teams as productive as possible seems to be pretty important. However, data teams are struggling today. Let's look at why. First, the tools that are available to data teams have been built decades ago for software engineering when life was much simpler and software wasn't as closely tied to data as it is today. Second, because data teams consist of many different roles, handoffs are necessary but are often slow and delay projects. And finally, there's so much innovation in this space, but most open source tools are built by and for academia and are not production ready. As a result, when it comes to productionizing data science projects today, we're still dealing with a big mess. If you've ever tried to do statistical data analysis, maybe train a machine learning model, you know that the tools that are supposed to make your life easier are still difficult to use. The reason, of course, is that existing solutions still haven't caught up with emerging practices in data science and machine learning. As a result, we're made to choose between three options that are all not that great. The first, and for many the most natural option, is to just give everyone the freedom to do whatever they want on their laptops. Of course, data scientists love that. You have full freedom to install anything you need and you can move fast. However, you're pretty far away from your data and you'll need to downsample and copy data onto your laptop. Of course, you don't have to sit in compliance to know that moving sensitive data onto your laptop is generally a bad idea. And the folks who are maintaining your production systems are definitely not going to be happy to try to reproduce your local environment. To address some of these concerns, some vendors take the approach to just put the same tools you use on your laptop into the cloud. Essentially, they're giving you a virtual laptop. However, just hosting Jupyter and giving you a virtual machine with scikit-learn pre-installed isn't that much of an improvement. Sure, you no longer have to copy data onto your laptop, but aside from security and governance, there are no obvious benefits. So really what you're getting are the same tools, just with more constraints. And finally, you may be asking yourself, why not iterate on our production infrastructure directly? Well, unfortunately, those production-hardened systems are not really ideal for exploration. And most data scientists will not be happy if you try to make them learn Kubernetes. So you're left with a hard choice. Full freedom of a laptop, slightly worse experience of the same tools in the cloud with few benefits, or a fully production-hardened system that no data scientist will want to use. And I'd say none of these options are that great. But we at Databricks believe that data teams really deserve better. So with a little bit of customer obsession and engineering, we've been able to navigate some of these trade-offs. Our solution for modern data teams starts with the premise that developer environments need to be open and collaborative. Our workspace follows open source standards and provides a collaborative notebook environment on a secure and scalable platform. Let's start with looking at some of its differentiated features. Here I am in a Databricks notebook where immediately you can see that Databricks notebooks are multi-language. Each notebook has a default language which can be Python, Scala, SQL, or R. But that's just the default. Each cell can individually dec declare its language and you can mix and match. In this example, we use a SQL query to quickly load data from Delta Lake. This allows different members from the data team to collaborate. One common example is data engineers writing their pipelines in Scala and data scientists then using Python to train machine learning models. Databricks notebooks also have built-in visualizations. So you can look at your data in a table view or you can switch to one of many supported visualization types. 
Here you can see how easy it is to create a bar chart based on the data that we just loaded. Because notebooks can become quite long, we added a table of contents feature that uses markdown hierarchy to allow easy navigation. This notebook trains a Keras model, so let's navigate to that section. One thing you will notice is the experiment button in the top right. Here you can see all of the runs that were logged using MLflow. One common use case is to look for the best model by sorting by a metric. So you can easily find the best run with the lowest loss. You'll see that we show parameters and metrics that were logged with this run as well. And because of the tight integration with the notebook, you can also go back to the exact version of the code that created this run, allowing you to reproduce this in the future. If you use the TensorFlow backend for Keras, we also embed TensorBoard in the notebook to look at the TensorFlow metrics during training. You can already see how easy it is for data engineers, data scientists, and ML engineers to collaborate in this environment. Let me highlight some of the collaborative features in a different notebook. Here, I ask my colleague Austin to help me out with this forecasting notebook. Databricks notebooks can be shared, and you can see from the co-present indicators in the top right that there are two users in this notebook. This environment also provides a commenting feature to facilitate collaboration. And what you will see here is Austin's cursor position in real time as he edits the notebook, and he'll add a new cell with more plots, which helps me out a lot. Now, once that is done, it is super easy to create production jobs from your notebooks by allowing you to configure a schedule on which they should run. This is very useful in cases where you want to update forecasts or dashboards regularly. Now, finally, I kept the most strategic feature, which has been widely requested by our customer base, for last. Soon, Databricks will allow users to configure a new color scheme for their notebooks. And maybe you can already guess what it is. It's dark mode. So by turning the lights off, you can go from this view to this one. And I know a lot of our users are as excited about this feature as I am. To summarize, the Databricks workspace provides a differentiated notebook experience for data teams. I showed you, in order of appearance, support for multiple languages, built-in visualizations, a table of contents, integrated experiment tracking and reproducibility with MLflow, embedded tent support, collaborative features like co-presence, commenting, and co-editing, scheduling notebooks as production jobs, and of course, dark mode. Now, many people think that such a collaborative platform can only be useful for exploration and experimentation. It has proven difficult to combine the ease of use and collaborative features of notebooks with the rigor of production deployments. So let's take a look at the other capabilities that an ideal solution for modern data teams need to provide. For code versioning and CSED, the industry has already figured out best practices and they are Git-based. So the solution has to integrate with this ecosystem and bring those best practices to data engineering and data science, where reproducibility is becoming more and more important. Finally, to reduce the time from experimentation to production, the same environment needs to be scaled to production deployments, allowing you to manage the full life cycle within one platform. Now, as mentioned earlier, most people say that it is impossible to provide one solution that satisfies all of these requirements. But at Databricks, we are really focused on making data teams successful. So we've spent a lot of time and energy on this problem. So today, for the very first time, I'm extremely excited to announce that we are combining all of these attributes in one product for modern data teams. And we're calling it the next generation data science workspace. Now I already walked you through our collaborative notebooks. So let's see how we extend this environment to support production grade deployments. We have introduced a new concept called projects to the left navigation panel in Databricks. One of the most common ways that data scientists start their work is to clone a Git-based repository. With projects, you can use Git to bring all of your work to Databricks, where you can access all of your data and use best-of-breed open source tools in a secure and scalable environment. Of course, when you do this in an enterprise environment, there's a lot at stake. So we have added security features to protect your intellectual property. Admins can configure allow lists that specify which Git providers and repositories users have access to. The most common use case for this is to avoid code making its way to public repositories. Another common pitfall are unprotected secrets checked into your code. We detect those before you actually commit your code, helping safeguard your credentials. 
So now that you can be assured that your code base is secured, we want to make working with projects as easy as possible. One aspect of this is to support a rich data format that allows us to retain more metadata than just exporting source files. We have extended the NB format that underlies IPINB to retain some of the metadata from Databricks notebooks. One example are notebook dashboards that can now be stored with the IPINB file. By using IPINB, we make sure that you can benefit from the ecosystem around this open format. To give you one example, most Git providers can render IPINB files and give you a great code review experience. Once you're done updating your code, we built the easiest way we could think of for staging your files and looking at visual diff before you check in your code. This makes it much easier to decide which changes to check in, which to revert, or which still need some more work. Finally, to integrate all of these workflows with your CSAD systems, we provide an API surface so you can programmatically manage projects, perform Git operations, and automate your deployments. Now, this really brings production-grade rigor to your data science and machine learning teams. To summarize, we showed the new project concept allowing repository-level Git integration, security features like allow list and secret detection to safeguard your intellectual property, support for storing Databricks notebooks with the NB format, new features for staging files and visual diffing, and the Projects API, which allows programmatic integration with your CSAD system. And I'm extremely excited to announce that everything I showed you today will be released within two short months. Now, to make sure that you don't miss the public launch, sign up at this URL to get notified. So we've worked with many of our customers to develop these features, and before I close, I briefly want to share some of their success stories. One of our retail customers observed a cultural shift in their data teams. For them, the next generation workspace really elevated the team to focus on quality and follow best practices. Another customer in media found that the projects feature helped them scale their efforts and increased their confidence in the production systems that they built. Initially, they went through elaborate processes to productionize the work, but with projects, they could automate that process. And finally, a customer building industrial machines cut their time to value from weeks to just days by streamlining the path from experimentation to production. Now, all of these companies are reinventing themselves to be data first, and the next generation data science workspace on Databricks is giving their data teams the environment that they really deserve. So in summary, this is our solution for modern data teams. I showed you how we provide collaborative notebooks based on open standards, integrate with the Git ecosystem for collaboration and reproducibility, and provide integrations with CSED systems for a robust workflow from experimentation to production, all on a secure and scalable cloud platform. Now, right after this talk, another company that has reinvented itself around data is going to share their story. When we think about luxury cars, what first comes to mind is often the end product, the sleek design, how fast it goes, and so on but we often overlook the enormous amount of effort it takes before that car actually rolls off the assembly line. So next up, we are going to hear from the data team at Daimler, who will give us a peek into how data and machine learning are playing a critical role to drive car production automation. They leverage tools like MLflow to automate a number of complex processes and provide insights that create production efficiencies. <laughs> 